Hello. Welcome to Storytelling the Heroine's Journey. I'm Kate Farrell, your host and guide as we explore the hidden terrain of the feminine unique quest and how it can empower your life. As a lifelong storyteller, I discovered that the age old folk and fairy tales and myths had survived for millennia by word of mouth and mostly from matriarchal cultures. In the last two episodes, we met some of the major archetypal characters in the feminine quest stories. There were the three mothers, the loving mother who dies, the evil stepmother, and the magical or spiritual older mother. And then there were the cruel and jealous stepsisters who together with the stepmother seek to demean and destroy our heroine, yet she is trapped and under their control. In this episode, we will discuss the standards of feminine beauty, an ongoing theme in all the heroine journey stories, one that continues to confront women in often a self-defeating battle. It was famously fought in the epic tale of Snow White and the all-seeing mirror. That mirror today is a modern worldwide standard of feminine beauty, thinness, firmness, and youth. Beauty standards are set by what we see on screens and what is and the metaverse, what is possible on screens with filters and AI effects. In this pervasive media environment, how can women escape to realize our own individual, unique feminine beauty? I offer a glimpse in my personal story. As you listen to this excerpt of Snow White, imagine your own daily mirror. How do you measure your feminine beauty and that of others? When I read this ancient fairy tale again, I realized how destructive imposing a standard of feminine beauty can be and how we must um, run to escape its influence almost as if it were the murderous ploys of the queen against her stepdaughter. In order to find and preserve our own beautiful heroic selves. This version of the folktale fairy tale is based on the 1812 Grimm Brothers version, their collection, Household Tales. Snow White. Once in the midwinter, when the snow was falling like feathers from heaven, the queen sat at her open windows sewing, and it was framed in black ebony wood. And as she watched the snow fall, she pricked her finger on her needle, and three drops of blood fell on the snow on the windowsill, and she thought to herself, how beautiful. I wish I could have a child who is red as blood, as white as snow, and as black as ebony. And she did. She gave birth to a little girl whose skin was as white as snow, lips as red as blood, and hair as black as ebony. After the birth, though, the queen died. A year later, the king married a new queen, and she was beautiful, but proud and vain, and did not want 
anyone to surpass her in her beauty. She had a magic mirror, and every morning she would stand in front of the mirror and ask, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? And the mirror would answer, You, my queen, are fairest of all. And then she was satisfied, for she knew that the mirror could only speak the truth. Meanwhile, Snow White grew more beautiful every day. And when she became a maid, she was as beautiful as the light of day, even more beautiful than the queen herself. And one morning, <clears throat> When the queen stood in front of her mirror and asked, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who in this land is fairest of all? And the mirror answered, You, my queen, are fair, it is true, but Snow White is a thousand times more beautiful than you. And the queen took fright and turned green with envy. And from that hour on, whenever she saw Snow White, envy and pride grew in her heart like a weed. And she became restless day and night. At last, she called to herself the huntsman and said, Take Snow White into the woods. I cannot stand to see her. Kill her and bring me her liver to prove she's dead. The huntsman obeyed the queen and took Snow White into the woods and was about to plunge his hunter's knife into her innocent heart when she cried out, Huntsman, let me live. I will run into the wild woods and never come back. The huntsman took pity and said, run, poor child, run. And he saw a wild boar run by and he killed it and cut out its liver and took it to the queen as proof of Snow White's death. Snow White ran in the dense forest. She ran over sharp stones and through thorny bushes. And just when the evening was about to fall, she saw a small house in the clearing and went inside to rest. We will pause the fairy tale there. We know that Snow White is not safe and that the Queen will soon follow her into the woods. Reflections. What is the queen's motivation in this tale? And what does she represent in today's beauty culture? How do you escape the influence of the overwhelming beauty culture to find your own true beauty. My personal story, Teenage Beauty. In our teenage years, we begin to define ourselves as beautiful young women. It can be exhilarating and painful. If we measure ourselves by an impossible standard of feminine beauty, we will damage our self-esteem and diminish our development. Yet all the while yearning to express our unique individuality but sometimes in our struggles to either conform or to stand out, we are gifted with a glimpse of our true beauty. 
my story. A high school freshman in 1955, I attended Our Lady of the Lake High School, a convent boarding school for girls on the far west side of San Antonio, Texas. But as a day student, the boarders were girls from wealthy Central and South American families, and they lived in the Grand Victorian School. But us day students were an ethnic mix of girls from the West Side neighborhood, a Latino neighborhood, a barrio with a proud heritage. It wasn't long before I cut my hair short into a DA or a duck's ass with sleek wings in the back and curly bangs in the front. I starched my uniform white shirt so that this, the collar stood up straight in the back. And I wore blue suede shoes, penny loafers like Elvis, and learn how to dance to rockabilly music. I wanted to stand out, to be different from the norm for teenage girls in the 1950s. Looks didn't mean a lot to us day students. Attitude was everything. Soon my parents found out about my cutting classes and ignoring my homework and getting poor grades. And they consulted with the nuns who suggested that I transfer to their brand new, newly built girls high school downtown, Providence. That building was a two-story cement block with rows of blank windows set on barren ground and was right across the street from the imposing all-boys Central Catholic High School. The students who attended Providence were middle-class, white girls, entitled, full-figured, with movie stars like Marilyn Monroe and Elizabeth Taylor, they aspired to be young sweater girls. For the first time, I was ashamed of my thinness, uh, my bony elbows and gawkiness and awkward and flat chestedness and wearing horn rimmed glasses. So I faded away to become invisible in that strict, quiet school. Until the senior play. I loved all of it with male actors recruited from a Catholic university. Now, the class beauty, blonde, blue-eyed Betty, had the lead of Elizabeth Barrett in the play, The Barretts of Wimpole Street. I had a small part as an elderly woman with a gray wig and makeup wrinkles. I had um, a scene that I opened my umbrella to warn off the tyrant, Mr. Barrett in a comic bit. One evening during rehearsals, while we're all sitting around chatting, one of the male actors, Glenn, asked everyone, who do you think is the most beautiful girl in the play? Now I know you're gonna think it's Betty, but I think it's Kate. She has such deep feeling in her eyes. She just shines. I, I can't look away. <laughs> I was the last person in the class to be thought of as beautiful, but I just grinned and let Glenn's work words 
sink in. Invisible, made up as the old woman in the play. Yet a sweet young man saw my true beauty. Reflections. What do you imagine Glenn saw in me? Has anyone recognized your true beauty at any time in your life? How would you describe your most beautiful self? Write your own mirror, mirror story and put it in your heroine's journal. Thank you so much for listening. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Your comments are always welcome. And there are more episodes coming soon.